What's up guys, in today's video I'll show you how to make a holy grail time lapse like the one that you've seen in my most recent subscriber special and we'll be using both Lightroom and LR time lapse to do that in the editing process right now. And yeah, I really hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. Okay guys, so before we go ahead, let's take a look at what the time-lapse actually looked like before we edited it. Okay, so as you can see, if we go through all the images, you might notice that there is some slight flicker right here. And this is due to the technique that we are using here, because if you are shooting a holy grail time-lapse, which is basically a day-to-night time-lapse or a night-to-day time-lapse, you don't want your camera to be in automatic mode. Because if you use any of the other automatic modes like aperture priority or shutter priority, you might run into problems with flicker. And these problems are often so severe that you won't be able to fix them in post. Now, if you take a look here at LR time lapse, I have already finished all of the time lapses for the video, but for the sake of this video, we'll reset one of the settings and do another run through this so that you guys can see how to actually do that. And by the way, LR time lapse is actually a paid software, but if you use the free software, you'll still be able to create these time lapses, but you'll be limited to only 400 pictures. So if you want to go above that and also get some additional features, you should definitely check out the professional version, which costs a bit, but yeah, I'll leave a link for you in the video description down below. And if you're interested in this software, then you can pay the full price and get everything that this software has to offer. Okay, so before we go ahead, let's clear all LR time-lapse editing right here. And then as you can see, all these icons have just disappeared. And if we go through these icons in a moment, you'll notice that the workflow is actually quite chronological. But before we go ahead, you should make sure that your folders don't contain any special characters, but not only the folder, the entire path should not contain any special characters, because if there are any, you might run into problems and the software won't be able to read your XMP files or the EXIF data of your camera. So as you can see here, the first thing it's going to do is initialize the sequence right here. So we click on yes. And now it takes a while and you can see that it's loading all the EXIF data that I've just talked about. And then you can already see some information about the interval. We've used the aperture, the shutter speed and ISO. And one other thing we have right here on the left side where we can see the time lapse is this blue graph right here, which shows the overall exposure of our time lapse. And as you can see, I've done a pretty good job in the beginning, but then my exposure went down quite a bit here and I had to put it up quite a lot. So this is not a perfect scenario, but I want to show you guys that it will still work. And then I also had some other bumps in exposure here, which was due to some cars that were introducing some lens flares on my time lapse. But I'll show you that you can still rescue that. It's not as bad as it looks here. If you're doing time lapses like these, make sure that there is no one running around with any lights or something. But before we go ahead, let's talk about the holy grail method for time lapse shooting. So as you can see right here, when I started the time lapse, the exposure went down a bit. Then as soon as I saw that the exposure dropped by around one third of a stop, I changed my exposure and this is where this bump comes in. Then it went down again and I did the same. And as you can see, this pattern right here is pretty usual for a holy grail time lapse. And then as you can see, the exposure went down and down and I stopped correcting it right here. And then you can see that I had to push it quite a bit here. But once again, this is no problem. We'll fix everything later. So the next thing I want to do with you guys is take a look at the sequence right here. We started with one six hundred fortieth of a second and we went down and exposed for a little longer as it got darker. And then we even raised our ISO later on. And as it got darker, we naturally had to raise our exposure. But I still wouldn't suggest shooting automatic exposure because you will have even higher bumps and you might eventually run out of your dynamic range of the sensor, which will then lead to problems like additional noise and so on. So you definitely want to use that holy grail technique and change your exposure gradually if you are doing a day to night or night to day time lapse or a time lapse in general. But all of this depends on the type of camera you have. And if you want a detailed step by step guide for this, then please let me know in the comments down below. So I'll make another video for you guys. So we did all of that manually because if we didn't, then we'd have more of these kinds of bumps like here. So the first thing we have to do is click on the keyframes wizard right here. And you can see that we now have around, I think 12 keyframes right here. And these are the blue triangles right here. These keyframes are actually single images of our sequence that we'll have to edit in Lightroom later. And the software will use auto transition later to create a perfectly smooth transition between our editing. 
settings. And the other red triangles right here, these are part of the Holy Grail wizard, which is the next thing we gotta do. If we click here, you can see that we now have another graph right here, which is trying to correct the exposure that we have introduced with that Holy Grail method. And now you guys always wanna make sure that this graph is as close to that yellow line as possible. But as you can see, this is probably as close as we can get. So the next thing we gotta do is save our changes into XMP metadata. Let's do that. Open up our Lightroom library and drag here to Lightroom and click on import. Now this will take a moment and as you can already see this image right here has four stars which is one of the filters that LR Timelapse creates so that we know which images we have to edit but we can also just go ahead right here on the filters and click on LRT5 keyframes. And just as I've said before, we have 12 keyframes, which results in 12 images that we have to edit here. So in our next step, you wanna go on develop and adjust the settings accordingly. I'll not go too much into detail here and just adjust the settings to something I like for a moment. You can of course adjust all the settings here, things like hue and saturation, everything is possible. You can even adjust the noise reduction or sharpening. And you can actually even work with graduated filters, but you don't want to create any new ones. There are two existing right here for the upper part of the image and two for the lower part of the image. And these will also be controlled by the transitions later. So if you wanna use them, then make sure to edit these. But the way it is right now, I don't wanna use these graduated filters and just continue editing the rest of the images. And if we wanna continue working on the next keyframe, we have to click Shift, click on the next keyframe, then go on Scripts and click on LR Timelapse Sync Keyframes. Now if we click on the second keyframe we can also adjust some of the settings and I'll make it look a little more natural here. And as soon as you're done editing that image do the exact same, click shift and on the next image then go to scripts, LR time lapse in keyframes once again and continue doing that for the rest of the images. Now if you take a look at this image right here, it is underexposed by just a bit, so you can just easily raise the exposure here, adjust the other settings as well if you want to, and continue doing the same process for the other images. Okay, and now as soon as you're done editing all of the images, go back to library, select all of your keyframes, go to metadata and click save metadata to files. Now if you go back to LR timelapse and click on reload, you'll see that it will reload all the metadata and now you'll have different exposure values here for our keyframes. And the next thing we gotta do is click on auto transition to create perfectly smooth transitions between these keyframes. Now it's calculating these transitions. And as you can already see, there are no longer any spikes here. It is looking a lot more smooth now. And we can click on visual previews to see what we've actually done to our time lapse here. Now this process can take a while if you don't have the best hardware, but as you can already see on the left side here, the time lapse is already showing our color grading. And it is also showing a new graph with purple color here, which is showing the new exposure value for our time lapse. By the way, if you take a look down here at the time lapse now you can see these icons that we have used the keyframe wizard here, the holy grail wizard. We have also used the auto transition and right now we're still waiting for the visual previews. So this is great to check whether you've finished editing your time lapse or not. And if you want to, you can also click on that check mark right here so that you can see if you finished or not. And this other icon, this play icon right here means that you have rendered videos. So in this case, I have already rendered this video out. So this is why you're seeing this icon right here. But if you're doing Doing this for the first time you shouldn't see that icon and now we have finished the visual previews and you can also see that purple circle here and as you can see the purple curve is actually looking quite good up until here where it starts jumping up and down and this is where I messed up my exposure a bit and where the other light sources also came into the image so now let's take a look at that So you can see it's actually pretty smooth up until here. And then it starts to flicker here. 
So to get rid of any flicker, we have to use the visual deflicker option here. The first thing you gotta do is click on that and then you can choose the amount of smoothing and this is the green line here. So if you adjust the smoothing, you can see that the green line becomes more constant here and it's not going down by a lot. So if you want to have a time lapse that looks as smooth as possible, you want this to be as high as possible, but you'll probably have to try some different things out here because if you adjust it too much, you might run into problems where you introduce a lot more noise than you want to. You definitely won't have to put that on 50 if you do everything correctly in your shooting process. So this is more of a please save me in post option, but at least we got it here. So let's do 50 in our case, then choose more for our accuracy and also choose multi-pass deflicker. And in our case, I want five passes for our deflicker, which means that it will smoothen the curve five times and this will lead to a more perfectly transitioned time lapse. So let's click on apply and now we have to play the waiting game. And if you take a look here, now the purple graph is actually being reconstructed and it's getting a lot closer to that green curve we have here, which is what our result should eventually look like in the end. So yeah, let's see if LR time lapse can actually fix that. Okay, so this is already looking a lot better than in the beginning. So now we're running our second deflicker and it's getting even closer to the green line here. And if you take another look down here, you'll see that for my different time lapses, I have chosen different times of refining for the deflicker. So in this case, I have refined the time lapse four times with the visual deflicker. This one was 11 times. And if you have a lot of flicker in your sequence, you might want to do that for a couple of times. Like in this case, I have done 16 visual deflickers. But if you've done a great job in the shooting process, you might not even need two deflickers and one will be perfectly fine. So yeah, that's perfectly up to you. And if you take a look here, the fourth and fifth deflicker is not refining the entire curve, but only the part of the purple curve that is not perfectly sitting on the green curve here. So it is actually learning and every single time it is doing another deflicker round, it's doing a better job. Now we've finished, click on play and let's see what we got here. this is looking a lot better. Of course, we got the lights, but the overall exposure is actually the same in most of the time lapse. If you take a look here, it stays quite the same. So this is mind blowing. Honestly, if we take a look at the results we had before that, I couldn't have belief that we would be able to save that. But honestly speaking, this software is doing a really, really great job. And if we did not have the light sources right here in the foreground, this would have probably looked even better. So you definitely want to make sure that no one is running around with any flashlights or there are any cars passing by. In this case, it was actually a farmer that was working late at night. So I can understand that it was my mistake. But if you guys can choose a location where there are no other light sources, you'll have the best possible results for you. Okay, so now that we've done all of that, it's time to export our sequence as images. We click on Lightroom right here. Then we choose our full sequence, click Control A to mark all the images, click on metadata, and then click on read metadata from files. This way we'll read all the transitioned metadata files from LR timelapse. This might take a moment. In the meantime, you can right click on one of the images and click on go to folder in library. And as soon as it has read all the metadata, you can click on export here. And in my case, I'm using the TIFF files with 16 bit, which is a feature you only get with LR timelapse pro. But honestly, guys, this software is totally worth it. If you're doing many time lapses, TIFF is a lossless format so this is perfect and then click on export. So now Lightroom is going to export all the images and if you're doing the editing of your time lapse with just the images then you're actually done here and you don't need to do anything else you can just import the images to your video editing software of choice but if you want to render your video using LR time lapse you can actually wait until all these photos are exported and then LR time lapse will open up another window where you'll be able to choose what kind of rendered video you want to have. 
By the way, if you don't have the professional version of LR Timelapse, you won't be able to export the TIFF files in that format here for LR Timelapse to render a video for you, but you can still export to DNG. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve, for example, you'll actually be able to import these DNG files, which is just awesome because Resolve will actually recognize them as a raw video file. And you'll be able to do further editing in DaVinci Resolve. While if you create something like ProRes 422 or DNX HR, you'll not have the same amount of flexibility. These are still great codecs for video editing, but RAW is just a lot more powerful. And if you want the most flexible option here, I would suggest to export to DNG and use the single images in DaVinci Resolve. By the way, my machine has 16 cores, so I can only imagine how long this would take on my old but mighty Dell XPS notebook which only has four cores. This is why I honestly prefer working on a desktop PC. You just have so much more performance and it still takes quite a while to export something like this. Doing that on a laptop will just take way too long for me personally. So I honestly think that investing in a good machine is definitely worth it. And if you guys wanna know what sort of machine I would suggest buying, then you can check this video right here where I explain all the stuff you need for a good video editing slash streaming slash gaming PC. And I even show you a step-by-step -step build guide for that. If you're interested in that, then check out this video right here. Okay, so we have finished exporting. Now let's take a look at LR timelapse. We can choose the codec. In our case, we'll choose ProRes. Source resolution for our frame rate, we'll choose 23.976 frames. We want a speed of one by one, but we could also choose two times because I think that 26 seconds is actually quite long. But since we'll be adding editing this in DaVinci Resolve anyways, we can just put it in like that. Then we'll also choose ultra high for our quality, which will lead to a 444 color sampling. And we'll choose white for our color gamut, full range for our video levels here. And if you wanted to, you could force the output to 16 by nine and even adjust the crop here. Then you could also use LRT motion blur, which can look quite nice actually, but I prefer to do that in DaVinci Resolve. And you can also use sharpen to get even more crispy footage, but I also prefer to do that in DaVinci Resolve. One more thing you might want to do is delete the intermediary sequence files after rendering, which are the images that Lightroom has exported for you. So if you only want to have the video in the end, you should definitely put a check here and then click on render video. And now it will start rendering your video. And as soon as this is done, you can import the footage into your video editing software of choice and do some further fine tuning or add some sharpening, add some music and export your final product, which could look something like this. Okay guys, so this is it. This is the whole editing process. If you still have any further questions, then please let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.